Rakan expected the gate to squeal as it opened, given the dampness of the tunnel and salt encrustation on the walls. But no, it swung inward on hinges as well oiled as those on a knight's joint. As he pushed in, Rakan realized that while the door itself was ironwork, its hinges were corrosion resistant adamantine. The iron lattice formed curling, spiraling wave patterns that overlapped one another. In the center, a sword emerged from the waves, and above it, an arching scroll device read Fang. Rakan had been so small when he'd last been here. The place had appeared so much bigger then, when Dade laid his father's lead light casket inside. A chamber twelve feet high, stone niches piling the dead four deep. Now he saw how cluttered and claustrophobic it was, a far cry from the marble vaults of his mother's aster line. The fang had always been of little prestige, a servant line, one step above vassalage. Even Baron Crane had not bothered much, it was out of the way, and over the centuries the stone niches had all been taken. Rather than expand the space, caskets had simply been stacked along the walls like crates in a storage depot. As far as the minion was concerned, the soul lived in the night. The body was just rotting matter. Rakan found the casket easily. It was the first inside the gate, on the right, pressed sideways against the weeping masonry of the stone wall. Hail, father. He unlocked a glove and laid a hand on the lead box, filling the embossed letters. Sir Selkar Fang, Knight Pilot of Jester, Savior of High Monarch Ivarius Kao, slain in victory. Rakan's hand curled into a fist and he thumped it on the metal. I tried, father. I truly did. Spend my life trying to better myself, escape this poor man's bloodline, be more than you were, than your mother was, to stop the cycle, be the first fang to pilot a Questorius knight, to be no man's squire, and look where it led me. The sob crept up, hidden behind the anger. He sucked air, eyes misting, and he all at once felt like he was drowning, looking at a smoke-twisted sky and choking on his own fluids. Text repeated in the corner of his home's vision, scrolling, looping, idiotic. What is the duty of a wounded knight? What is the duty of a wounded knight? I don't know, he shouted. I don't know. You weren't here to teach me. All the tenderness you showed and all I can remember of you is dying, burdening me with your charge. What the hell were you thinking, knowing I would inherit Jester? That I would have to see you like that, feel you like that, leaving me a message devoid of love or care. Just tell my son to rise from his blood. Entry to rise from his blood. Entry accepted. Fang line established. Declare yourself, knight. Rakan stopped at the sound of movement. Large movement. In the rear of the vault, the coffin-laid wall pivoted on its axis, revealing a glowing light beyond. Declare yourself, knight. Leonius Rakan. Hail, Leonius Rakan, scion of the Fang line, son of Selkar Fang, pilot of noble knight Armager Jester. Threat notice. Planetary alarms triggered, ship detected in upper atmosphere. Hostiles in Sector 72. Heaven Defense West besieged the stable house Morvane has landed. Defense activation authorized. Will you ride to the defense of the realm? Tentatively drawn by the light, Rakan stepped through the swinging wall, took off his helmet so he could better see. So awestruck was he, he didn't even notice when the door closed behind him. I have been waiting, said the voice like thunder over the Red Sea. Waiting? asked Rakan. Waiting for what? For thee, Sir Rakan, the voice answered. It filled the chamber with a rolling echo. What is this place? asked Rakan. He shedded his eyes so he could see it better. He could key no point to it. An underground dome cavern, thirty feet wide, with a plasteel grating floor. Below the floor was a green sea water underlight by spotlights. The rippling liquid cast an ethereal spirit light on the ceiling and walls, and he realized the sea cavern must be deep enough to be below the algae layer. In the center of the room, a circular hole in the decking gave access to a curved thing coming up from the water. Rakan's first thought was that it was some kind of animal, until the hatch opened, and he saw the lights of control consoles dancing inside. This is your legacy, said the voice. The legacy your father left you. 
that his mother left for him and her father left for her, all the way back to the unremembered days. The secret he would have told you had he not died so young and unexpectedly. But he left you the key. I had not thought it would take so long for you to discover it, but I have been patient. You knew my father. All too briefly, but a good man. He would have done much if called. What will you do, now that Morvane has defiled the sacred soil of our kingdom? Will you mount up and rise from the bloody sea? You are a knight? I... I am not bounded to you. I never piloted anything but a humble war glaive. And how can you speak? You will find it natural. My controls resemble a war glaive. You've already piloted the squire. Now it's time to pilot the knight. The squire? He asked. Noble knight jester. It is my pair. We are bounded. Have been so since before the rockets left Terra. The pilot of one is the pilot of the other. Arkan found himself drawn to the upper shell of the machine. From its time underwater, green kelp had grown on the hatch, lying saggy on the otherwise thick adamantine. Arkan lowered himself inside, if only to see what the controls were like. Old leather creaked as he lay in the seat. You want me to ride for glory, I presume, he said, glancing at the control panel. No, rumbled the knight. Rakan could feel it vibrate under him, a throne mechanicum so powerful it was nearly alive. But this machine is a defender, bound to dominion. There is no honor in this charge, no cheers of victory on the tournament field, no campaign badges or banners. It only does its duty. And what duty is that? To rise from the bloody sea, take the enemies of this world and hurl them screaming back into the darkness, to bring song to the hearts of friends and terror to the hearts of foes. Is that what you want? Rakan smiled. Yes, that would be splendid. Then don your father's helmet, Sir Rakan. He slipped it on, attaching the cable of the throne mechanicum. Hail, Sir Lionius Rakan, the helmet said. Will you pledge to ride to the defense of the realm? Yes, said Rakan, teeth clenched, ready for what must come next. The data spike snapped down into his skull, and in an instant he saw battlefields and tournaments, burning stars and stomach-dropping voids, places he had no memory of and monsters unnumbered, a kaleidoscope view of a thousand lives smashing and separating, mosaics of memory and his father. He felt his father. Tell my son to rise from his blood. And when he opened his eyes, he was another being entirely.